Okay, here we go. Pancreation philosophy. Hello again, everybody. It's me, your host, Fosholo Cruz. It's episode 152. And we got a guest today. What's up? We got Taylor Clark, comedian. Follow him on Instagram, Taylor Clark Comedy. And he just dropped his comedy album called Addictive Tickle. Uh, where can they find that, Taylor? They can find it on Bandcamp if they really want to give me the most money, which I okay. highly recommend because I deserve it. Yeah. But you can find it on iTunes. You can find it on Spotify. I think it's even on YouTube. Okay, nice. So, Taylor, I guess let's, uh, let's backtrack. So how did, you, uh, how did you get started in stand-up comedy? <laughs> I did improv theater sports in high school. Okay. Did you have theater at your school? I think we had theater. I just wasn't familiar with like theater sports. Could you like explain that? Yeah. So it's like, uh, you're a huge Drew Carey fan, right? Like everyone's always yeah. saying, hey, you remind mm -hmm. me of Drew Carey, right? Yeah. So I imagine yeah. you yes. watch a lot of the Drew Carey show. Are you familiar oh. with Drew Carey's Whose Line Is It Anyway? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. so that's theater sports. It's, okay. um, you know, at its best corny. <laughs> at its worst, you know, unwatchable. <laughs> okay, okay. And, and then, so how, how did, what about that, like, made you want to do it? Or were you, did you, like, watch the Drew Carey show or watch Whose Line Is It Anyway? I mean, or who like, didn't? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one of the brilliant minds of our day. Um, yes. Drew Carey. I was more of a Mimi guy than that's for people <laughs> who actually watch the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still, I have a Mimi fetish, and the internet doesn't know what to do with me. <laughs> and that's saying something. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, no, I watched uh, Whose Line Is It Anyway? Definitely, because it was like a hot show when I was in my you know teens. But they had like a theater sports class, and I joined, and I did it for two years, and it was like some of the funnest time I ever had. All my friends did it. We were you know, just some stoner skater kids that just like <laughs> came into class and yeah. got to essentially just make jokes for an hour, you know? Okay. So okay. we, um, when I went to film school after that, I, I, when I graduated, I was just like, God, I just kind of like miss performing and always remembered thinking about like open mic comedy is like a yeah. thing like, oh yeah, I've always, you know, been watching such a huge comedy fan my whole life. So always <laughs> thinking about it. And when I moved to Seattle, there was a comedy club just like a couple of blocks away, essentially. So I was yeah. just like, man, it's like right there, like a, uh -huh. a comedy club, <laughs> like, <it was> like, <laughs> like, like yeah. from the from the history books, you know, or from the from the fantasy novels that yeah. I read in my childhood. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I, all I have to do is go eight paces left and then put my name on the on the <laughs> magical paper, and then pretty soon I and then I'm a comedian, I guess. <laughs> So I did that and I was just like hooked from that point out. I was like 21 years old. Okay. I started giggles in Seattle. Okay. Okay. Um, so do you remember anything about, I guess, like your first time at, at an open mic? Like, I, I brought friends because the owner yeah. forced me to. I went to like yeah. a few open mics and yeah. uh, just to watch mm -hmm. and was like, all right. And the, what blew my mind was that when I went this, to the second time I went to an open mic and saw the same comics from the first open mic and they mm -hmm. did the same jokes. And I was like, <laughs> I could not fucking believe that. <laughs> and I was like, that's how we get better at this. Yeah. I was like, as soon as I realized that, I was like, all right, I should try this. And also I knew I wasn't going to be the least funny guy there. <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah. So those two things, I was like, all right, I'll sign up. And the owner was like, you got to bring people. You won't get up. And I watched him, you know, pretty much humiliate several comics <laughs> while I went to uh, the first open mics just to watch. So I was like, well, I don't want to be humiliated. So I'm going to listen to what he says. Um, that didn't stop him from continuing to humiliate me for the next two years. But um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I brought a few people and I did really good actually on my first time. Like, and I'm even saying that now, like objectively for the first open mic, like I actually had like a decent set, but then I like bombed for, you know, 15 years following that. <laughs> huh. Okay. So I guess like heading, so like when you were heading into like, you know, your first open mic, like what was your, I get thought process when it came to like to jokes or like to what you were going to say? 
did you like put a lot of thought into it or how what, what was that well, like coming from doing improv i definitely mm -hmm thought that I would be able to just kind of like live on my toes a little bit, mm -hmm. um, which is, if you've ever tried, is the most frightening thing because you're just like, it, just, you're up there for so long, <laughs> even for three <laughs> minutes. Like, if one thing doesn't go that way, like, are you going to commit to that? And then we're going to try to go bob and weave and go another way because mm -hmm. if that doesn't work, now you're bombing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and just, now you got to recover from bombing improv wise it's just impossible so you eventually start wanting to like be sure you have jokes that you can always like pull out in an emergency <laughs> and so i started really paying attention to who my favorite comics were mm -hmm. and realizing that like i probably should just want to talk about my life because i don't want to be a hack yeah because that was <laughs> i definitely observed really quickly that that was not well liked or uh, <laughs> seldomly encouraged <laughs> So I didn't want to be a hack. I knew that. Okay. So I was like, I'm going to just try to just talk exclusively about my life and my own personal experience. But that, it, and that pretty much stayed in that lane. Uh, okay. So, so you mentioned like, yeah, look, looking at other like comedians or comics that you, that you looked up to, like, could you say like, who are somebody like your big influences or comedians that you enjoyed following? Um, before I tell you mine, you tell me yeah. yours. Let's see. For me, I like, let's see. I like, I mean, I like some classics like Richard Pryor, like Eddie uh -huh. Murphy. Totally. I like, uh, George Carlin. I like, let's see. I, I enjoy, oh, like Richard Jenny. I like some of his stuff. I like. Richard Jenny was great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's the current, I like. Like Mark Norman, Sam Morell, uh, Hannibal Burris, Jim Gaffigan. They're all right. Yeah. They're yeah. Okay. Those last three. Yeah. Yeah. For medium. No, they're all amazing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know Sam and Mark a little bit, not to name drop a little bit, but you know, they used yeah. to email me to do my show. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. And I text them regularly to yeah. no response. Uh, but. <laughs> 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 remember in 2011 where uh, yeah. you didn't do my show what can uh, i have your agent's phone number now um no yeah. <laughs> that'd be so funny if i did that <laughs> um the uh <laughs> well, i totally forgot what i was talking about i love all of the comics i wanted to establish that that entire list great yeah. high quality taste carlin for sure one of my biggest influences um, but to tell you the truth, the first comic I ever saw live was Louis Anderson and it okay. was in Las Vegas. And I think okay. I was like nine, <laughs> but it had the craziest impact on me Okay, because okay. he killed and I was like right up front and it was Vegas. Yeah. Like, like, you know what I mean? 5 PM matinee show, like yeah. clean act. Yeah. And he talked to my little brother who was like four or something like that in the audience. And just, I just remember not really getting the jokes and looking around and being like, wow, this yeah. is like a superhero. <laughs> like <laughs> I could not believe just how he was able to just like, everybody was just laughing so much, like buckled over and just how, how casually he, <laughs> I mean, I make him sound like a 1940s gangster or something, but like, he did kind of have that point. Like, I'm Louis Anderson. <laughs> Um, not an impressions guy, but he, he was amazing, a huge impact. But my favorite comics ever have are Dave Chappelle is probably like top of the list, like biggest influence. One of my main reasons for getting into comedy. And, uh, from there it was like fucking Bill Burr at the time. I, when I first started, I loved Dimitri Martin and, uh, Mark Marin actually was like one of the first comics who was this is a weird because this is not anybody's story. He's like the first comic that was nice to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> and his reputation is like to be an asshole. And he was like so nice to me. Like, un like I made other comics like upset that he was so nice. <laughs> he to was me. nice to you. <laughs> yeah, because he wasn't nice to everybody else. It was like fucking cool as shit. And I, but I watched his career from that point on was just like glued to him. I just, the way he was able to talk about his life and, you know just be so expository and still make it so fucking funny and witty and 
surprising and stuff. So those guys and uh, fucking um, uh, fucking God damn it. Joan Rivers. Okay. Okay. Always fucking liked her even when I was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> she, oh, and Don Rickles. Her and Don Rickles were like two of my favorite comics when I was a kid because they were so relentless. Okay. I could keep going. I could talk about my favorite comics forever. <laughs> Fucking had a Flip Wilson album back here. Okay. He's the best. I don't think I'm familiar with Flip Wilson. Like, dude, just go back, dude. He was just a fucking pioneer, groundbreaker. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got got to check that out. So so anyway, this is great. You must. Who else have you interviewed? But you must be getting smart. Yeah, <laughs> I must be getting smart. Yeah, I, I've interviewed like I guess quite a few comedians. Let's see. I got probably a lot a lot of people that that you know like Jesse Warren, Mike DeVore, Adam Tiller. Gangsters. Like quite, yeah, quite just quite a few people from from the Seattle scene. Dope. But um, yeah, and more if they want if they want to be on the show. But uh, yeah. So I guess that's in, cool. So I'm I'm seasoned. I mean, those are great <laughs> comics, but yeah. I've got a decade on them probably. Oh, yes. Yes. So definitely, yeah, definitely like most seasoned. Like so they, have, they didn't tell you who Flip Wilson was, did they? No. You gotta come to Taylor for that kind of <laughs> deep, deep catalog reach. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I guess in like watching like other comedians and seeing, you know, how they did like, and you mentioned that you realized that you had to talk about your life. So did that make you look at your life in like a kind of a different way or make it look at it like, like looking for more jokes in that kind of way or like, how, how did that change in terms of yeah i mean just like what is going to be interesting like what yeah. are people actually gonna like and then you don't want to like force it at all either like it's truly the long road mm -hmm. and i would i have like tons of like just maybe more like observational jokes or more like set up punchline jokey jokes that are super just like personal or connected to my story and even then i try to you know bring it into some sort of personal narrative usually okay but um it i don't know if, i don't know if it, it, it gives you a different outlook i mean comedy does that to your brain anyway so like while you're also looking at the street signs and being like has anyone done a joke about how the yellow light is so confusing <laughs> you know <laughs> um <laughs> the same part of your brain goes back over all of your past choices in your life and your whole history and goes was there comedy there okay. was there a joke there could i could i pretend that my mom has a irish accent because maybe then i could you know get yeah. on conan okay okay <laughs> so because that's yeah. what i heard gets you on conan irish accent irish i, don't know who gets, I gotta stop getting all my advice from my dad <laughs> <laughs> I guess, I guess uh, on on that regard, like who, speaking again in advice, like what were some like what was some like early advice that you got in comedy that you still use like today? Yeah. Dude, Mark Maron told me early on, I was like, dude, it takes like a decade, fifteen years, you know. Like he straight up was just like, I mean, just get ready, like buckle up, like what are you a year in? Like you probably won't do anything. And I was just like, I just hit me so hard, and I was just like, all right. <laughs> and I just never and I think it was healthy in a way because I just never really rushed it okay I would watch people really ambitiously you know and it would very impressively like become like super successful early on and amazing it just always was like huh you know like they did it it didn't take them 10 years <laughs> and wonder <laughs> like is it all right you know and then after 10 years you start to be like all right maybe it's not gonna happen and that's where I was. Okay. But it's a, it becomes a thing, like, it kind of just, you, I, I, at one point, I was just like, I think I'm just fucked. Okay. Like, I think I have to keep doing stand-up, like, in a weird, fucked-up way. Mm -hmm. I remember telling my wife that I was both, like, crying when I told uh, her. Okay. Because it was, like, sad news. That I was like, I don't think I can stop. Like, I actually think I have to keep doing it. And we both cried. Wow. <laughs> that's a true story. <laughs> Okay. Because it's kind of like a terrible life. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we both knew it, you know? Like, yeah. we were both like, yeah, fuck, that sucks. Like, we're, 
doomed to live this <laughs> comedy life. Okay. And we were both like, knew it was true and yeah. were saddened by it. <laughs> Got it. It was like the inevitable of, of it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And we've just been kind of like, for the last couple of years, just kind of like letting that all settle. Okay. <laughs> it's just, I don't mean to like yeah. be so dark, but I mean, that's a hundred percent. Drive a wife and kid of 36 years old. I was yeah. driving Uber Eats last year. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, no, for sure. I guess like, I guess in terms of that, like, so how did it, I guess, what, what keeps you in comedy then? Like other than the, the inevitable, like, for um, I just can't shut it off. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. it becomes like a thing where I'm just like, I, what, it, I gotta go try out this joke. I want to see if this works. Maybe this will be the thing that kind of helps me fit into this longer 20 minute thing. And it's like the, the craft and the process of it is just like addictive almost like, and when it works, like that feeling of when it, you put it together and it finally your whole plan, like a mad scientist, you put it in the microwave on stage and it fucking comes out and it tastes delicious. It's just like that, that celebration, that ecstasy that you feel when everybody gets to eat that dish together. It's like just, uh, you know, addictive. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what it was, especially when I came back to Seattle and the crowds were good. Okay. Coming from New York where it was just like so much, just like terrible crowds, crowd, just so many small shows, just so much time in between like big crowds and good sets. At least for me, I wasn't really, you know, uh, doing well. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't <laughs> doing great shows all the time. So when I came back, back to Seattle, even the open mics were great. I was like, there's no reason not to just like kind of keep up fiddling around with comedy. Mm -hmm. So I just kept doing it. That's all, that's kind of like the tall and skinny of how it all just kind of kept, and it just kind of kept snowballing from there because I think I kind of just kept, stopped giving a shit as well. It wasn't like about a career. Yeah. It was like, I just want to finally get the kind of act, you know, like yeah. the beginning and the end of this. Okay. So I guess in that portion, like of coming up with an act, like what, uh i guess like did something like shift or how does like so how like how if you were trying to explain coming up with an act to somebody how where would you start yeah. Yeah. dude i mean like like i said it's a long road there's no easy way to do it like just and this is the advice i'm sure you would hear on like any fucking podcast is yeah. like just keep doing it it's mm -hmm. just you've got it's relentless mm -hmm. Like I said, you just can't turn it off. It just is something that just like, you just have to kind of like keep doing. And then it'll like, depending on your vision, you have a bunch of comedians that you love and you aspire to be like, you draw inspiration from them without obviously like copying them. And then over time, you know, you'll start to kind of really piece it together. All that being said, some people might just be like, no, I want to be, you know, a mailman pirate and that's my yeah. character and i'm gonna write <laughs> jokes for this mailman pirate and i have a full vision for what his comedy arc would be and what his hour will look like yeah and if they're talented enough maybe they can fucking do it and that would be like in their first year of comedy they'd have an hour special as mailman pirate mm -hmm. but i wouldn't know you know how, where did it begin where did it begin trying, with that you know that's like a one-man show type of shit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So but it I, might work like you know people <laughs> have made careers out of less so. yeah. <laughs> very very true so i guess so taking that then to your comedy album addictive tickle like how like how that did that process start for you yeah. um can i say I'm, i don't know this is like a rated r podcast right yes yeah sorry i'm also it's kind of late and i I'm, de I'm definitely high Okay. Yeah. So yeah. On weed. Yes. Um, okay. Good. Just so we're on yeah, the level. We, so we, we, talking we, about mailman pirates. Yeah. Stuff. Mailman pirates. And yeah. We don't give a fuck. <laughs> All right. Good. Good. I like this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, the album was like, at the end, really, I wanted to get it a weekend at laughs. Okay. And I noticed that they were just like giving some weekends away <laughs> and I was just like, I was, I want to, and I'd, I'd been obviously writing my, trying to put my act together for my, for fucking 13 years at that point or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it was like, 
been he- I'd just been headlining that year essentially just started really like actually headlining and so I was like my hour was as good as it's ever been essentially and I was like fuck man like maybe I could just get a weekend at last and I'll record an album like kind of honestly like this like because a lot of people do that and their albums don't come out and shit you know yeah and yeah. I was like and I'm fine with that because <laughs> I'm such a I'm, my jokes are never finished anyway so I was like most likely I won't get it mm-hmm. you know like I won't get the whole perfect album the way I would want my debut album to be because it's like Frodo's journey to get a five minute set that's good you know so I was like I took 10 years to even get a five minute set that's good who do I think I am I'm gonna get an hour that's good I've been headlining and they've been good but some of them are at fucking you know breweries and you know the the basements of fucking you know restaurants and stuff so you're like I'm not gonna record an album in front of these psychos <laughs> so <laughs> gonna do it in an established room i'm not gonna do it at a theater so i lapsed as my home club i talked to dave and angela they seriously didn't even hesitate they were like for sure let's work it out let's do it you know we'll do a door deal blah 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 and i was like fuck it's real and i scheduled it like a month out or something like a month and a half no maybe not that that's not true maybe it was like two or three months but not enough time really to be able to like really get some all the momentum building that I wanted to yeah but I was like fuck it I'm gonna give it my my best college try Mm -hmm. um and I asked my buddy Avi who I'm running I was running a show with in Queen Anne to produce it for me he produced uh a lots of stuff before he's an executive producer and really talented but he'd never done a comedy album but he loved comedy he really liked my comedy so he was kind of like a fan just like the best case scenario so he really didn't mind having to listen to my comedy album like 4,000 times while he was cutting it together. And he forced me to hire a union sound guy. And then he forced me to hire like a really good camera operator. And uh, so we could film it really well so I could have all the footage for the promo. Dude, and like seriously, like Friday, with Friday, Saturday shows, I, I, that's how they do it at last, just two shows on Friday, two shows on Saturday. And it was like, first night like was like amazing so many skateboarders came out it was like so humbling i couldn't it was fucking crazy because i've never really been that like uh i don't know like super well embraced in the like seattle skateboard community when i was a kid Mm -hmm. so coming back like as a full-grown adult and having them come out for my comedy and shit i was just like it was like a dream come true just that friday night early show and then Saturday night early show, no, like no skateboarders came, and all my son's fucking Montessori school teachers came. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I was like, dude, that's like I really wanted all my skateboard jokes to like be a focal point in the act, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? And I was mm-hmm. like, but the Friday show was like was good. But I, the Saturday show was a bigger audience and like, you know, just like the energy was better. It was a way bigger, like more mixed, like demographic of people and everything like that. And that was when I, I invited the camera guy because Saturday early show is like prime. That's like your best show of the weekend usually. So all of the ingredients were there except the crowd had these like teachers and no skateboarders. Yeah. But it still ended up fucking being like the best you know, one of the best sets hours I've done for sure, ever. And it was like only like 120 people in the crowd or whatever, but it sounds fucking good, dude. It sounds like an album. Like the sound quality is fucking amazing. The producer killed it. The guy who recorded it is amazing. Like, I wish I could remember everybody's names right now, but fucking, like I said, I'm uh, high. And uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> but they're, they're all G's. I hope I can tag them all when this, come, this all comes out. Um, and they killed it. So the pr- end product was like better than I could have imagined, except for the Montessori teachers interrupted at one point. Oh. Yeah. And I had to cut that shit out, and stuff, <laughs> which was awkward. Oh, okay. But I love them. You know, they fucking yeah. work all day with those goddamn kids. They come out, finally get to have a, a wine spritzer and a couple of laughs. Yeah. Get out of control. I got to forgive them immediately. <laughs> oh. 
Okay. Okay. But I, but then I cut. That's like that's like the tall and skinny of the story. But dude, then I went mm -hmm. on. You know, I that was in August 2019, and my yes. goal was to like come out in the spring and mm -hmm. then go on a tour and mm -hmm. like the summer to kind of promote it, you know? Yeah. And I even started booking dates. Like I had two dates already. Yeah. And then March, fucking COVID hit. And yeah. it was just like, and I just went into like working on the album at the slowest rate possible. Cause I had to homeschool my kid for the fucking last eight months and be yeah. his daycare coach, t teacher and his gymnastics coach and his mm -hmm. jujitsu instructor and his, you know, tutor and every, it's just, you know, full-time parent like you know for the last yeah. eight months mm -hmm. fucking nuts but then anyway so now, and then i finished it and i was like dude i'm not what am i waiting on i wanted to wait till this kind of like maybe opened up so i could tour but i was like if i don't do it now i'm not going to do it because luca was supposed to start school he was so crazy you're like the first person i've talked to about this oh really? okay nice. yeah because I, I just dropped it like last week and i yep this is what happened is i put it on a week ago on mm -hmm. Friday mm -hmm. and and uh, the the plan was Luca was supposed to start in-person school which he hasn't been in this entire time no daycare no in-person school nothing and he was supposed to start on Monday so I was like all right I'm gonna release my album on Friday it'll see how we can kind of get cooking through the weekend <laughs> and then uh, on Monday I can like launch into promo and then his, his school got shut down oh. on Monday and yeah. had to go right back in. He's doing digital school, but it's like he's in for 45 minutes and then he's out. And then he's in yeah. for 10 minutes and he's out. And it's like, they, it's the best school ever, but like, I don't, I don't actually get to like focus. And then I got to like make dinner. And so full stay at home dad, when I get a second, I try to go skating and that's about it. But anyway, so then I fucking put it out anyway. I was like, fuck, school shut down, fuck it. I'm gonna put yeah. out my first video because I have this whole strategy for what I wanted to do. Okay. For how I wanted to promote the album. And it all started with this first video. But my plan was to start like sending it to people and telling them to promote it. Like just a few people that I know that have more followers and stuff and be like, hey, if you could share this, my album just came out. Just some, I'm just a desperate loser. Please help me, I'll suck your dick. You know, like whatever I gotta do. Yeah. And uh, I didn't get a chance to put one message out. I have, I've had to suck no dicks. And my first video is already at fucking over 10,000 views wow. on, nice. on Instagram with like no help, just like a post, just by posting it. So wow. it's like already fucking starting to take off. Okay. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> just in the last couple of days. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So I guess like, yeah, so it dropped a week ago, I guess. I mean, you don't need to share your plan, but like, what's like next for you in terms of, uh, I guess, like promoting it or talking about it, like from there? Um, dude, I'm so stoked you asked me to do this. The timing is awesome to have like yeah. even been able to like get this all out once yeah. to tell this story <laughs> out loud. Yeah. Because it's still like, honestly, like so surreal to me because I've been sitting on this album for over a year and there's been a pandemic and a race war and fucking we're only at the beginning of like what might actually fucking happen in the next couple of months. Yes. So who knows what the future holds? I didn't think it was going to happen. So I still have the plan of like slowly rolling out new video clips every week mm -hmm. um from the album and like uh, dude i mean i have a pretty good chunk of the album that is usable on video uh, the videos are usable okay so that should hopefully last for several months and then in the meantime keep putting out more like skate videos um and i have a web series with a, a pilot that i've already shot two years ago okay that i was planning to release with my album uh, and then go on and then tour the web series, uh, which is comedians at skate parks. Okay. Where I just hang out with comedians at skate parks and we banter and we skate and then we do a live show. Okay. And that's like the whole show. Okay. Um, so I have that pilot that I'm going to re start slowly releasing clips from and then hopefully a full episode, you know, in the next month or two. Okay. Um, and then hopefully new episodes of that, you know, every month alongside as much content as I can put out pending my kid going back to school and then a tour fuck a tour who knows I went to film school I'd love to make movies I don't know who's watching this but uh 
Um, I don't have representation. Uh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Nice. Let's go, baby. Big dreams. <laughs> Big dreams. No. Go, going for it. I haven't even had a chance to dream in the last like nine months. So it's cool to even <laughs> fantasize right now. Okay. Okay. That's, that's pretty exciting stuff. Okay. I guess, I guess we can start wrapping up there. Uh, Want to just tell them again, like, Dude, where thanks, they can find man. I album. really appreciate yeah. this. This no, was man. awesome. Thank you for your time. Like, could you like tell the audience again where they can find your album, Taylor? Uh, yeah. Please go to taylorclarkcomedy.com. There's links to my album on there um but you can go to Bandcamp. you can also go to itunes you can also go to spotify but you really want to support them um although you should listen to my podcast which is on spotify um nice. what's your podcast and, called uh and you should put my tracks in your playlist on spotify <laughs> as well and uh you should just support me in every way possible okay <laughs> please god <laughs> for the sake of my life and my children oh. um <laughs> What, what was I'm your so podcast tired. called, Dude, man. Thank you so much, bro. <laughs> say yeah. what? What'd you say? Well, what, what was your podcast called? Yeah. My podcast is also called Addictive Tickle. I think, oh, it's also called Addictive Tickle. Yeah, yeah. So okay. that's, my, that's my company. And it's basically just me fucking around on the piano okay. and, uh, and babbling and having fun. Nice. So similar yeah. to this. Okay. Cool. All right. This has been Taylor Clark, everybody. All right. Thank you. Thank Taylor. you so much, Montreal. You're the best, man. I look forward yeah. to more podcasts. I'm going to start listening. Oh, for sure. Thanks, buddy. All right. All right. Take care, buddy. Bye. Peace. Take care.